it is my distinct privilege and incredible honor that for 18 consecutive Easter's, I've been able to stand in this very place and declare the testimony. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Jesus Christ is alive. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the crowning moment of God's salvation for each of us. Jesus is alive. The resurrection declares that sin cannot defeat our Savior. The resurrection declares that death cannot conquer our Lord. The resurrection proclaims, grave, where is your victory? The resurrection today that we celebrate on this holy moment in time is the testimony that God is eternal and that His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, is powerful, victorious, and He is Lord of all. And today, as we gather, we are here because Jesus is alive. And we today, who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to be amped out of our minds about the fact that Jesus, 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 He is living and He lives in you. If you can dance, dance. If you can shout, shout. If you can clap, clap. If you can testify, testify. If you can stand, stand. Let's let the world know that the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah unto the Lord. Can you imagine what it must have been like on that morning? Can you imagine what it must have been like on that morning? This morning I got up, as I always do early, and I went outside. You can stand, sit, whatever you want to do. I don't know. Woo! Went outside this morning. You know, and I go up early and I run all the time. And usually when I get out there in the morning, you know, I'm angry that I've got to be out there running and I'm frustrated and I don't enjoy getting out there and doing any of that. You know, it's just a chore to tie up your shoes and all that and go outside. And I usually don't hear anything. I mean, I'm just out there pounding the pavement. You know, all I hear is just my heavy clomp. Well, it's probably more like that when I run. (laughs) I got a little energetic there for a moment. And when I went outside this morning, my goodness, it was like nature was just erupting. I mean, I heard birds singing. I've not heard singing in a long time. I think there were monkeys and elephants and lions around my house this morning. I mean, there was just nature declaring the glory and the beauty of this morning. You see, all of heaven and all of earth, even though there are the skeptics who would say that he is not real, even though there are the doubters who will say that he's not alive, even though there are the atheists who said that he doesn't exist, there's one thing that no one absolutely cannot deny, that no one cannot defeat, that no one can destroy, and that is the fact that Jesus is alive. And he is alive in this place today. Now, we understand that testimony. We gather for that testimony. And by the way, it's not just an Easter Sunday testimony. It's an everyday testimony. It's 365 days a year, seven days a week. Until our Lord returns, the fact of the resurrection is what we live and breathe and have our life within. But as we gather here today, we often come to, to talk about some great historical moment when Jesus rose from the grave. And it is a great historical moment. But in our minds, we often keep it there. What does the resurrection mean today? What does the resurrection mean in my life and in your life? I mean, it's one thing for us to know and to believe and to trust and say everything of our life is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And indeed it is. Because the Bible says if Jesus isn't risen from the dead, then we're still dead in our trespasses and sins. If if Jesus did not rise from the grave, then our preaching, our teaching, and our witnessing, it is all in vain. So the resurrection is it. It is the event. It is everything that we have today within the Christian faith. But oftentimes we want to keep it 2,000 years ago, and it's a great moment. It's a holy moment. It's a celebrative moment. But what does it mean for us Today, what does the resurrection mean for you this morning? 
What does the resurrection mean for you at this very present time in your life? I'm grateful that the New Testament writers understood under the inspiration of God that the further that we get away from an event, the more that we need to understand what that event means to our lives. The further that we get away from something happening, the more that we need to link our lives to it so that we know why and what that significant moment in time means to us. And the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians spoke about the resurrection. In chapters 4 and 5, he details what the resurrection meant to those individuals within their life. As a matter of fact, if you will just open your Bibles there to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, you're going to be able to see in verse 14 of that chapter, he says, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. I mean, he talks about what the resurrection means to them, that, that, that eternal understanding. And then if you look down into chapter 5, verse 1, he says, We know if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And so on each side of the verses that we are reading today, we're able to understand that Paul is speaking about what are the practical applications of the resurrection of Jesus Christ for our life. And I pray today that they'll take on that meaning and significance for each of us. For in verse 16 of chapter 4, the apostle says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. As a result of the resurrection, as a result of everything that God did in Jesus Christ for us, in verse 10 of chapter 4, he says, We're always caring about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. So therefore, we do not lose heart. Now many of you today have lost heart. You've lost heart in the, in the stress and the strain and the struggles of life. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Now remember what the apostle is doing. He is saying, this is what the resurrection means to your life every day. And he is talking about our lives right here. He may be writing to a church in Corinth, but he's writing to people. He's writing to folks who have the same kind of matters of life that they deal with every day, just as you and I. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Pray that God will bless his word today. You see, the empty tomb stands as a testimony a testimony of God's glory and God's grace. God's glory. Jesus interpreted every moment of his life as an opportunity to bring glory to the Father. As a matter of fact, prior to going to the very place of Calvary, Golgotha, Jesus in John 17 would pray specifically, Father, glorify thy name. And he understood that doing the will of the Father who had sent him is how we glorify the Father. And so when we come to the empty tomb, we're able to see that the Son indeed had glorified the Father. He had completed everything that God intended for him to do for our salvation. And when he died, his death was not in vain. When he died, his death was not as a death of other men. He was God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. He had died for the sins of all, as we have read in 2 Corinthians. And so here now we see the empty tomb, the stone rolled away as an eternal testimony to God's glory. It is also a testimony to God's grace. For grace fills everything of our life that we cannot fill. All the empty places, all the broken places, all the crevices and cracks of our heart and of our life, all the places where we struggle, grace 
overflows. Grace lavishly is poured upon us. And the empty grave is a testimony of grace. If the, if the stone were not rolled away, then we would be looking at loss and lack. Loss because it would say that death did win the day and sin did overcome. And there would be condemnation that we would have because we cannot overcome our own sin. And so when we look at the empty tomb, we see glory, not loss. It also would be lack. Because grace is God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves in Jesus Christ. And if Christ did not rise from the dead, if Christ was a conquered king rather than a conquering king, then we would only have lack. We would never be able to fill the gaps of our life caused by our sin, caused by our failings, and by our failures. But because He lives... We live. Because He lives, we can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future, the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And so Paul takes that understanding of glory and grace and very clearly in these verses plugs our lives into the resurrection. This is what it meant when Jesus rose from the grave, and this is what it means today for those who believe in the Lord Jesus. We see this within the Scripture. For there, within the verse that we are looking at, verse 16, we're able to see the eternal healing that comes in the Lord. God's eternal healing that comes in Him. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Eternal healing that comes in the Lord. I don't have to remind anyone here today that we're a year older than the last time we gathered here on Easter. And over this past year, we've seen the outward man perishing. Over this past year, there have been tragedies that have happened in our community and in our families' lives. There have been friends who have been killed in car accidents. There have been husbands and wives who have died. There have been moms and dads who have gone on to eternity. There have been grandparents that we love that have breathed out their last. You see, we're reminded every day that the outward man is perishing. Since we gathered here a year ago at Easter, you know, there there are some of you who made a visit at a doctor's office that changed everything about your life. There were tests that were carried out on your body, this outward man that's perishing. And and you gathered there and you you heard a physician look at you and say, I'm I'm sorry, the, the news that I have is cancer. Or, or I'm, I'm sorry, your, your, your heart is, is so damaged that we've got to do some extraordinary things just for you to survive. Or, or maybe you've gathered in that place and they, 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 they've looked and they've said, you know, the, the issues that, that, that you're facing is called dementia. It, it moves to more progression of Alzheimer's and these are some of the things that are going to be happening in your life. Maybe, maybe you've gathered before that, 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 that counselor and, and, and you're trying to figure out how, how, do we, how do we reach that prodigal son, that prodigal daughter. Maybe you've sat before someone and said, how can we salvage our marriage and our home and our family? You see, every day we see how the outward man is perishing. And, and no one is immune from that. I, I, I haven't found a person yet that goes through their life problem-free. I, I haven't met that person yet who reaches an old age and still looks back and says, man, so I don't know how I did it, but I navigated these waters, and I, I never had a problem, never had a struggle, never had a hurt, never had a pain, never sick, never, never anything bad happened in my life. 
You see, that's just not reality, is it? We're going to face those things because the outward man is perishing. And the, the reason of that is because of our sin. That is sin's consequence upon our physical life. But I pray that you will not allow sin's consequence to become sin's condemnation over you. Because this passage teaches us that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the place of our eternal healing. Because it is Christ and Christ alone who mends and molds our life. It is Christ and Christ alone who, who can touch us at those deepest places of hurt and pain. And those places where we wonder, does anyone care? Does anyone know? When those places of despair within our life, there, this risen, living Savior is in our life. And He and He alone is the one who gives us strength. And sustains us. He is the source of our eternal healing. For even though this outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. I have that salvation in Christ. That inward man, that personal relationship that I'm able to have with the risen Savior. You see, if Christ isn't risen from the grave, what we accept and what we believe in is just dogma and facts and some type of historical record. But the dogma and the facts and the historical record are simply a testimony of the fact that we have a living, risen Savior who is a part of our life. And day by day, even though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed by the living Savior within our life. How do you face those moments how do you deal with those matters? How are you able to overcome when you have that news and you don't even know if you're going to be able to breathe one more breath? It's only because of His presence, His presence, that we can move on. The resurrection gives us eternal healing. We also find within this passage as we continue forward, that the resurrection is our eternal help. For notice in verse 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, this is a verse that, that I have to think about and, and, and really allow to to, to, to drive my thoughts in my mind. Because I know that when I'm going through those moments, they don't seem like a light moment. <laughs> they don't seem like a momentary experience. It seems like it's just almost overwhelming. It just seems almost so unbelievable that, 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 I, that I'm in a fog of some ways. And, and, and what this passage says to us is that, remember, we are living in the temporal realm. And because Jesus Christ is alive, there is a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that we know in and through Him. And while we go through these light afflictions, which are for a moment, he says there, I am your eternal help. I am your eternal help. Well, now, Pastor, I was listening to the radio the other day. Or I was watching TV the other day, and this preacher said, if I'm truly a believer, and if I truly have faith, then I'm never going to have any problems. And if I have problems, it's because I'm not a good believer. And it's because I don't have faith. What, what does this passage say? What this passage says is that to the best of believers, there are going to be problems. And there are going to be struggles. What this passage says is that to every person, 
there are going to be afflictions that we are going to encounter. I mean, Paul encountered afflictions. He had a personal affliction. He prayed to the Lord, take it away, take it away, take it away. And out of that, Paul said, he's not taking it away. But what he's taught me through my affliction is this, is that his grace is sufficient in everything in my life. Did Christ the Son escape affliction? Beaten? Scourged? Persecuted? Forsaken? Betrayed? Denied? Spit upon? Blasphemed against? Cursed? Placed upon a cross as a criminal? Dying a death that he didn't deserve. And yet Jesus from there would say, in this moment of light affliction, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In in this moment of light affliction, Jesus would say, it is finished. I have accomplished for all of mankind what the Father sent me to do. I have paid in full the price of sin. I have suffered in their place. I am the sacrifice for them. I have shed my blood, sufficient grace. And as I breathe out my last, I have glorified the Father. And what is now taking place will be a far more exceeding weight of glory. Because God is our eternal help. And so in the midst of our struggles, never, never separate the salvation that you have in Christ. In the midst of our struggles, never blame God Never omit God, but learn to trust in God because He is alive and He is with us. And just as we bear within our body the dying of Jesus, we also will bear in our body the living of Jesus. And so the resurrection is our eternal We also see within this passage that the resurrection is our eternal hope. For in verse 18, he says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. The things which are temporary are seen or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I realize in this this worship time, we've got many students here and young people. When you start talking about eternal you know, that's, that's like the rest of the school year. Uh, <laughs> that's eternity. Um, it's hard to keep our mind toward the eternal, the things which are not seen. We focus on the things that are seen. And the things that are seen in this world are, are things that are very temporary. But isn't it amazing how we place so much of our hope in the things that are seen, our hope in the things that are seen, our hope in the things that we can define, our hope in the things that we can hold, our hope in the things that we can kind of manage and manipulate, our hope in the things that we are in charge of, our hope in the things that we make decisions over. That's where our hope is so often. And our hope is found in all this stuff. And all this stuff is just fleeting. We get some stuff and we got hope. And that stuff wears out and we have to go buy more hope. I mean, I got on a new suit today. It's Easter. I thought, you know, my old suits look a little ragged. Well, actually, I couldn't fit in them. No. Uh, my, my <laughs> and I thought, you know, man, I'm going to get a new suit for Easter. A little pinstripe, you know, and a little tie. And I think I'm looking pretty sharp with it myself. I mean, I don't know. But you know what? This suit doesn't mean anything. 
Another year from now, I'll be looking for another suit probably. Just gets worn, gets ragged, gets old. That's just stuff. And so often our hope, our hope is in stuff. It's in the things that are seen. Now, nowhere do we find in the Bible where the things that are seen aren't a part of our life. I mean, the the Bible doesn't condemn that. But the Bible teaches us that we have to not be lorded over by those things. We have to allow Jesus Christ to be Lord. And he will add. And maybe today your hope is resting in what you can see, what you can touch, rather than in what you believe. You say, well, how can I put my hope in something I can't see? How can I put my hope in something that I can't touch? How can I put my hope in something that, that, that just because you say it's real and the Bible says it's real, how do I know that it is real? And that's what the Bible calls faith. You see, I wasn't there on that resurrection morning. The ladies went to the tomb. Peter and John ran to the tomb, and Peter got outran by John going to there. And they testified. And then they told someone who told someone. Jesus, following the resurrection, appeared to many. And they testified of that. And from that resurrection morning, that resurrection morning, this powerful testimony of the living Savior Jesus Christ has penetrated and permeated every facet of our world because you cannot quieten and silence a living Savior. And I don't have to touch it to believe in it. But I've experienced it by faith. And it is real because I live with the peace that passes all understanding. I live knowing that my sins are forgiven. I live knowing that the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, the living Lord, lives within my life. It is real because I know that one day when I breathe out my last, that because he lives, I will live eternal. And I have no fear in death, no fear in dying, because I know the one who holds eternity, because he is the Lord of eternity. And our eternal hope is found. This world is fleeting, but the things of the Lord are forever. Indeed, our hope, your hope, must be in Him. And so the resurrection, it is the place of eternal glory. Absolute eternal glory. And we live and breathe within that eternal glory in our own lives. This morning, if you have never trusted in Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. It is on this day, it is in this place, and it is at this time that the Spirit of the living God is speaking to your heart. It's not what a preacher has done, but it's what the Lord is doing. And because He lives, He is drawing you calling you, convicting you unto himself. And I pray if you have never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that today you will come and experience his eternal glory and grace. Life is only found in Christ. And if you have never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, And may this be that morning. You say, well, pastor, what are the ways that I would do that? Are there ways? No, there's only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ. It is through repenting of your sin and confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And today is that acceptable time. 
the day of salvation for you. We're going to have pastors from our church that we're going to ask in a few moments, and they're going to be standing here across the front. They're, they're not here to guard. <laughs> they're here to open up the opportunity to Christ. And these are godly men who will talk with you and pray with you. They cannot say because none of them has risen from the grave. They may wake up on a Sunday morning, but they've never risen from the grave. They are not saviors. They are servants. And they can testify of the salvation of Jesus Christ for you. And I pray that you'll come today and allow them just to lead you to that understanding of how to know Christ within your life. Would you come today? Maybe believers are here this morning and you've just been reminded today of some things that maybe you just kind of let go. What does this relationship with Christ really mean to me? What, what, what significance does it hold within my life? And maybe, maybe there's just been some matters that you've been struggling with and dealing with within your life. Maybe, maybe you've been pressed down and maybe you, you've been perplexed and maybe you've been in despair and all those things that this, this scripture has spoken of, you're in that world. And, and today you've just been reminded of what Christ would do for you. And you want to come and pray, pray that, that you will allow that that understanding of the power of the risen Savior to be that which will sustain your life in Him. Would you come today? Maybe others here this morning that are believers in Christ, and God's brought you here, and you know that this is the church that, that, that you ought to be a part of, a place to serve. And if that's God's will for you, for your family, then we would certainly encourage you to make that decision in the Lord today as well. Let's stand with every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power and the truth of your resurrection. And we understand, Lord, at this moment, that eternity is weighed in the balance of the hearts of many who are here. And I pray that this will be a day, the very morning, the very moment, that they will trust you, believe you, surrender all unto you, Lord, in an act of salvation that comes only through the death and burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for just that tender understanding of your spirit as it calls. Father, now for believers, Lord, we live in a world that has so much that pushes against your word and your truth. Help us, Lord, to understand how the resurrection plugs into our life and significance day by day. And may we live in the life of the resurrected Christ. Father, we pray for other decisions that you're placing on the hearts of people today. Lord, use this time now. May it honor you in every way. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.